For now, we want to save Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you. So, so, somebody said, Labour Party agents were not in all the boots. I agree with you because we don't. We started. You know how we started and everything. There's so many lessons we learned. Somebody asked about lessons we're going to correct in the future. I won't stay here to tell you those lessons. Whether we are going to collaborate with people, you know, if the need be, yes, of course. People, collaboration, I'm collaborating with you people. You are truly the biggest collaboration we need to be able to dismantle what I'm talking about. We're going to work with everybody who thinks the same way we think. Who wants to do the same thing we're doing? Our collaboration will not be based on transaction. It will be based on transformation. People have to be thinking the same way we're thinking. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. If you go and collaborate with people who don't think the same way, or those that can easily change, because there's some people who, are, who can change and believe in what you're saying. You can collaborate with them. But if you collaborate with those who don't believe in what you're saying, you're going to have a problem along the line. I always say to people that I want to drive this bus. I want us to be in the same place with people who are going to the same destination with us. Because if you go and carry people who have passed their destination, you have a problem. And that's not what we want to do. We want to do the right things. And Again, eh? Just so we are clear, all right. Me personally, as a personal me Mayegun, eh? I do not believe, okay, that uh, Peter Obi will be able to do some of the things he says he will do. Not because he he doesn't want to or he won't want to, but knowing what Nigeria is, here you get. But here is uh, something I kind of see and why I encourage you never to join others who are going to sort of uh, manage to convince you to keep hating on him. It is meaningless. It is useless. What I do on this platform all the time is not to tell you anything new. Most of what I talk, to, talk about on this platform every now and then, they are mostly things you already know or read about, but never really shown much interest or what have you in until I make you show interest by letting you, by making you get go deeper. Like, sorry, by going deeper with you. Why am I doing that? I can't sit down there and be telling you about Nigeria problem. That would be boring. You all know about that. Eh? I can't just sit down there and just be telling you about uh, politicians are bad and the rest of that. You all know all that. But if you don't understand how bad they are and who and who is involved, who and who is that bad, whose actions or inactions eh, are going to affect your lives. You see, the moment you now begin to understand that, oh, well, this thing can affect me too. This thing is affecting me. Oh, oh I didn't see it that way before. What can we do? My ego, what should we, what can we do now? That is, that means you are now looking at it beyond just the headline. Since it no concern you, since it no affect you, then maybe it's none of your business. But when you watch Mayegun, and Mayegun says, look at this, look at it this way. If you are not a victim yet, it's because you, you don't know yet, you know, you will be it all. Then you are supposed to start feeling like, okay, what can we do? We need to do something, you know? We need to do something about our, this way, you know? So if uh, Peter B is not breaking it down in that way, that you have to know that it is not about who becomes your president or not, right? It's about you demanding or understanding why you want something different or better. Because I personally believe that the way Nigeria is, even Peter B as president of Nigeria, eh? We still send the army. We still send the DSS. Send their police after anybody who is trying to break up Nigeria. It is their tradition. Obi will not sit back and allow us to just carry our flag everywhere. But the difference is this: there's a chance that the reason why he would want to keep. I'm just saying this now. 
he, why he would want to keep Nigeria, it's not for selfish reason. It's not for self uh, enrichment. It probably will come from the uh, from the point of uh, sincerity of you know innocence, which I want to buy. So by so doing, it will likely, as he promised himself that okay, yeah, I will likely. I mean, I will sit with people and have a conversation around this. There must be something we can do before we can now say, oh yeah, break it up finally. There must be something that can be addressed. The concerns of all of the everyone in part of Nigeria who has grievances or grievances. That is something called leadership there. Okay? It simply means that, number one, somebody can actually decriminalize a democratic right, self-determination. It's not a crime, but in Nigeria it has been criminalized. Criminalizing it in Nigeria is not because those criminals love Nigeria. No. It is because breaking up Nigeria today is like breaking up their, their loot. Do you understand that? And that is why they will kill anybody for it, and they don't want to have any conversation around it. No conversation. So that's the difference. So when I show you these things, I just want you to, to see through this man eh, how those who are like the millions of others who are actually listening to him, how they could actually be a big disruptor that would disrupt and kind of uh, destroy this establishment. Anybody will get uh, the dagger for hand. Amen. I always encourage them to him very, very high. I don't want them to miss. And since we don't know which of them that we eat, don't join them in destroying this uh, obedience. Don't let them use you to continue to pass their hatred towards the egos, which escalated because an ego man saying won't be president. Because they will use you again and again. But what would, you, what would you get back in return? Poverty. Oppression. Suppression. And even death. Why would you do that to yourself? Here. He was being asked, and he, I think he was talking about uh, those who are in the diaspora. And they, you know, talking about partnership or no partnership, right? Uh, he had this to say. Listen. And finally, we said, will you keep contesting? Well, I can tell you. I would wait on that. Because that one is like, oh, would you keep contesting and all that? And he kept telling them, this is not about contesting or so. All right, if we have to put pressure on those who are there to do the right thing, if they can fix the whole place, if our pressure could make them feel the, fix the place, it is still a win, right? I'll come back to that. Listen to this one. He was talking to the supposed uh, Nigerians in Canada who are now pretty much, uh, you know, unsure if they want to go back to Nigeria or not. Nigeria is suffering the biggest uh, or the highest in Nigeria's history, brain drain where people were living in droves at every given opportunity. He had this to say. The problem of the North is when it, you start from the top, the minor... Let's put the questions. This is a question time. Sorry. He will put their questions together and he answer them afterwards. So I'll push out. I'll, I'll show you that after. Listen. The problem of the North is when it, you start from the top, the minor tribes that are there, they will not be able to get the help. And even if it's given to the top, they will give it to their own religion, and other religion will not get it. So they continue donkey years. People are still, there are a lot of places, no light, no even water. They still drink uh, water from the stream. So I hope you will look onto the, uh, on that. Uh, also, next time you're coming to Canada, we'd like to see uh, uh, the first lady so that we'll have women to mentor. Thanks. That's a question for, the, for His Excellency to answer. Okay, so I'm standing on the existing protocols. My question is around, I mean, the incident from the last election where 
we found out that some pool booths were not well covered by the Liberal Party agents. So my question is, what strategies are you looking to put in place, like in the coming election, to make sure that this, there is a widespread of um, Liberal Party agents appears to going to be in Liberal Party? Then are we hoping also to see like a collaboration or a merger with other um, other um, political parties because, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for you to unseat the present gov uh, government or the pres present administration. So this is my question. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a question for Mr. Peter Obi. I just want to say thank you very much to, for giving Nigeria youth a lot of hope and encouragement. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Hello, Your Excellency. Thank you for have, um, your presence here today. I just have a question in terms of what advice would you give Nigerian youth in the diaspora and at home, um, like in terms of they have lost hope um, based on everything. I know that... We have the same sentiments as people, but what would you advise us in terms of what, how to support our community um, back home? Thank you. This is a very good question. How many of you here know MC Danfo? MC Danfo? If you know him, you know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Your Excellency. I have two questions, two prompt questions. Uh, the first one is a personal one. Um, you've said a few things. One is about the criminal enterprise in Nigeria, about how difficult things are. I'm wondering, how do you keep going? Can you tell us what keeps you going in this work that you are doing for which you're not being paid by anybody? but you've been doing it now for at least since 2021 or 2022, and you've, been, you've persisted in doing it since after the election. So that's the personal question, what keeps you going? Uh, the second part is kind of policy related, and that has to do with the security situation in Nigeria. I just came back from Nigeria last week, and I couldn't travel between Oweran and Soka for security reasons. So are you able to tell us, not the detail, but Give us some idea of maybe how you think you would have handled the security situation in Nigeria that is keeping people from moving and conducting even ordinary commerce. Thank you. Okay, we can go to his uh, responses now. Or to, I mean, to do set questions. He's already answered one, which I have played to you. But let's take on this. And finally, we said, can't be quit your children, Anak. I think you'll be. The problem of the North is when external influence. I don't need to lobby anybody. I can tell you that I, I went to several meetings when this thing, and finally we said, can't be quit your children, Anaki. I think you'll be safe. The reason why we have insecurity today is because we didn't invest in our youth yesterday. Yes. It is those people that were left and abandoned that have become a problem to us. If, they were, if we have invested in them the right education, the right things, the North is far unsafe today than the South. Because they didn't invest in education. They didn't invest in training those people. So if you leave these people abandoned, you are actually not saving your life. So what we are doing is investing in them to save our lives and for our children to live in a better society. Yes, you're in Canada. You live in a better society. But I can tell you, in terms of Nigeria, you're also the, one of the biggest leaders because your children won't come back there again. They don't want to be associated. Who wants to go where there's insecurity? Somebody just said he could not go because they don't want him to go to Enugu. They want to go to... So if you don't go, you think your children will ever go there? You think they'll come for your barrier? No, 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 no. They, I've heard people who say, listen, you know, just bury my dad and wish him well. 
So, what you are doing is that you are investing in your future. And a youth asks me, what do I think about the youth? Yes, you're right. My advice to you is that you came from a country called Nigeria. Chinese people live in Canada. But they are proud to be called Chinese people. They have never abandoned China. They are still Canadian Chinese or Chinese Canadian, whatever you call them. Indians are here. They have never abandoned India. They are still proud to be saying, I'm an Indian. So are Vietnamese, so are Philippines, so are everybody. Everybody is still happy to say, I'm from here. And if your own is not bad, so you can in your own little knowledge. And when we talk about capacity building, not the word capacity building, people say to me, what is about capacity building? It's using that knowledge you learned from here, that exposure, that belief, and translating into not thinking about his tribe or his religion. I can tell you, whenever people tell me about religion, what I tell them is, and I'm sure I've said it here in Canada, Dubai is thriving. If I go to Dubai, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. I go to St. Mary's, I think St. Mary's Church in Dubai. The Catholic Church in Dubai, the land and the church was built by Emmy of Dubai. He's written there. He, he gave them the land, built the church. So why is our own different? So it's even encouraging that diversity. It's even encouraging that situation because it makes society work. The biggest mosque in Europe, no, well, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm correct, but one of the biggest is in London. It's a land given by the queen. The queen is not a, so it is, why would it be? I'm not scared of anybody in Nigeria. I believe that we're same. I always introduce myself as a Nigerian. I don't believe there's any part of Nigeria that I don't love. we Nigerians. For me today, I want to invest in the North. I believe we can pull Nigeria back from the North because they have all the resources. Our biggest cause of our inflation today is food. We have vast or cultivated land in the North. If we cultivate it, we can feed Africa. We can feed everybody. You see me in my tweets, question why should Ukraine have more grain than Nigeria? Our land in the North is bigger than the entire Ukraine. Ukraine is about 603,000 square kilometers. And the northern Nigeria is bigger than Ukraine. So the youth, I urge you to be part of this change. It is necessary for us. Well, what do you advise? What if... Don't worry. Well, let's continue as well. I want you to listen to everything. But they are like, short, 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 okay? And mind you, have you have you liked this broadcast yet? Like, have you like liked it? Like, go under the video and just now. If you haven't, please do. Right. So let's get through to it. Here, Labour Party agents were not in all the boots. They are talking about the Labour Party not having agents in all over the place. And what did they learn about that? He has this to say. Labour Party agents were not in all the boots. I agree with you because we don't. We started. You know how we started and everything. There's so many lessons we learned. Somebody asked about lessons we're going to correct in the future. I won't stay here to tell you those lessons. Whether we are going to collaborate with people, you know, if the need be, yes, of course. People, collaboration, I'm collaborating with you people. You are truly the biggest collaboration we need to be able to dismantle what I'm talking about. We're going to work with everybody who thinks the same way we think. Who wants to do the same thing we're doing? Our collaboration will not be based on transaction. It will be based on transformation. People. Okay, that's some uh, wordplay. Transaction to transformation, not transaction but transformation. 
Here is another part for the next one. Personal influence. I don't need to lobby anybody. I can tell you that I went to several meetings outside Nigeria. Do Americans come to Nigeria when they are running an election? No. Do Canadians come to Nigeria? I will not go to any country. I'm a Nigerian, and I'm running to run to, to serve Nigeria. Why would I go and lobby anybody? I'm one person who says, if I'm in office, we'll stop foreign aid, because we don't need it. God gave us everything. We don't need to waste anybody's time. I said it today when I was in, when I was in, in our city council. Nigeria has everything it needs to be a super country. God gave us everything. I don't need to go and lobby anybody. We we'll need just need to fold our sleeves and walk. It's as simple as ABC. We don't need anybody. I have governed the state. I didn't leave the state. Things were bad. Before I became governor of Anambra, Anambra was known for bad references and everything. In fact, it was named home for all. And I came and said, there's no place called home for all. And we changed it to what? Uh, light of the nation. And we said we'll be first in everything. No longer are we going to be used in bad reference. No quarrel, no nothing. And we face the work. Say from education, from health, from this, from that. Fixing our small roads and everything. Somebody asked me today about it. I said, I didn't do. I didn't start any new road. Maybe one or two. That I fixed the ones that were existing. Completed the one my predecessors from Ngike to everybody started. That's what we should do. We don't need any influence. We want external relationship. In fact, let me tell you about international relationship. The more developed, the more developed, the more you dig in and do the right things, the more you earn your respect internationally. Yeah, that's true. China didn't start by coming to beg America. Neither was Vietnam, neither was uh, India. Today, yeah, it's been celebrated. These are countries, a few years ago, that were stuck in underdevelopment. If you don't know, within 50, what we talk about, about China, India today, between year 2000, which was just yesterday, and year 2015, China put 439 million people out of poverty. India did 260 million out of poverty. Today, those two countries, the biggest in population combined, Nigeria is almost having more people in poverty than two of them. It cannot happen. All we need is to have people who are sincere. And this man. And the people sincere, according to OB, will change things. You see? There are people who believe that all we need, listen to me, all we need is just more million like that. There are six million. Uh, it will be uh, six or ten million uh, supporters. Okay? Because this one is like, we know it's pretty much like rigged as well, right? At least, that is something you can touch, African Wahala. All right? That is enough to cause uh, a total disruption. And I know a lot of you believe that uh, Obi has uh, a strong hold on his uh, followers. No, he doesn't, but they respect him a lot. It was the first time that some of them were even surprised that they allowed them to put that such number or they allocated such number to them. And that's why they continue to believe that uh, Obi won the election. Now, that is all they need to get mad, get angry in one of these states. It's a base that is enough scare the establishment not to want to they do not want them to erupt here you get that now eh the african wahala so what that simply means is that whether he is posturing whether he is uh unity begging whether he's whatever you like you can say he's doing as long as he can keep eh as long as number one as long as uh, he remains the symbol of the millions of all these uh, obedience. 
eh, that automatically makes them very valuable. And we must protect them like endangered species, like we protected the IPOB and everybody that believes in the ideology.